Hello everybody, welcome to the first video in a new series, Engineering Statics, or as some of you guys may know it, Engineering Fundamentals. Today, just a nice little easy, simple video, we're going to talk about the difference between scalars and vectors. This is kind of the introduction to engineering for all first year engineers, so let's jump right in. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is scalars. Makes sense, right? If we're talking about scalars and vectors, the first thing we're going to talk about, of course, is scalars. Now, it's a big scary word, scalars, you guys may not have heard it, but it's actually something that you guys have used quite frequently, beginning all the way in elementary school, where scalars are quantities defined by a single number. Now, the key here is that they do not have a direction, and this will make sense when we talk about vectors. So some examples of scalars include mass, speed, area, and temperature. And this makes sense, right? I wouldn't say that my mass is, let's say, 180 pounds south, it may be going south, but it's not actually directed south. Same with temperature. I wouldn't say it's 40 degrees north, something like that. So as you guys can see, if it does not have a direction, it's a scalar. So it's pretty easy to determine what a scalar is. Now, scalars are actually very nice for us because they follow the normal rules of mathematics. 2 plus 2 is 4. 2 times 2 is 4. Very simple stuff that you guys known and have perfected before coming here to university. Now where things start to get a little bit different, and this is where your engineering careers begin, is when we start talking about vectors. Now vectors, as you guys may have guessed, because of scalars, vectors are physical quantities defined by both a magnitude as well as a direction. So the key here is that they have that direction component. Some examples would include velocity, acceleration, and force. Now the best way to show that is to show you guys a little bit of an interactive example, if you will. And let's say that I live in Calgary and I wanted to go to Edmonton. Now, of course, the best route would be directly there. If I'm going at 100 kilometers an hour or 100 miles an hour, the best route is always directly there. Now, if I were to keep my same speed, so 100 kilometers or miles per hour, but I were to take a little detour, but again, the same speed, we know it's going to take longer to get to Edmonton. And that's because the direction starts to change. So my component that's actually heading towards Edmonton gets smaller or larger depending on the direction. Now, the problem with vectors, as we're going to see and spend a lot of time with in these first couple videos, is that vectors follow a kind of different mathematical operations. It's not just as simple as taking one vector, adding it to another. We have to kind of go a little more intuitive into what is going on. So the first thing we're going to talk about when it comes to vectors is the most simple thing, and that is vector properties. So vectors are graphically represented with an arrow. Sounds really simple, right? Just an arrow. If you guys have an arrow, it means you guys have a vector. Now there's a couple things about this arrow that make it special. The first one is kind of the line that the arrow follows, because an arrow, of course, is linear. It's going to follow a linear line. Now this linear line is actually called the line of action. So when we talk about moments in maybe video 10, kind of further down the road, you guys will see me use the word line of action a lot because it's going to become very important. Again, it's just the line that the arrow follows. The second one is the arrowhead or the sense of the arrow. This is the vector's direction. And of course, this is going to be very important. If I'm dealing with vertical vectors, it's going to be very important whether the vector is going up or the vector is going down. Think about forces. It's very important when you design a building to know if your forces are pulling the building up or pulling the building down. So that makes sense to you guys. And the final thing, which is going to play a very important role in these first couple videos, is the length of the vector. Now, the length of this vector is the magnitude of the vector, all right? It's the magnitude. So if I'm going 100 miles per hour south, 100 miles per hour, that's the magnitude. The direction is south, but the magnitude is 100 kilometers per hour, miles per hour. And again, that's going to be a scalar. So that's the key here. The magnitude of a vector is a scalar. Now, vectors are symbolically re represented in many ways. It depends on the source, but all in all, they look very similar in the end. So the most typical thing you guys will see is that a vector will be bold. All right, most textbooks have it as bold. And then in addition, most textbooks have something kind of over the top of the vector. So you either see a straight line, a kind of a half arrow or a full arrow over top. And if we're talking about the magnitude of a vector, as we discussed above, which is a scalar, it's going to have the same symbol as the vector, but it's going to have kind of those absolute value signs around it. And this is actually nice because remember, magnitudes 
are going to actually be always positive. It's the direction that changes things, but the value itself is always positive. Think back to speed. If I'm considering 100 miles per hour, 100 miles per hour is always going to be the same. You don't go negative 100 miles per hour, something like that. North or south, that'll start changing things, but the actual magnitude will always be positive, which is nice because again, we have the <laughs> absolute value signs to kind of remind you. Now, me particularly, I use these two formats. I like the half arrow. I don't know why, it's just maybe it's something I was accustomed to when I was an engineering student, so this is what I will be using in my lectures moving forward. And that's it for this video. So again, this video, more just a brief introduction. There's going to be no examples for this particular topic, I guess, if you will. But moving forward in the next video, when we talk about addition and subtraction of vectors, the best way to learn is going to be through examples, which I will have posted in the video descriptions down below. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you guys in the next video.